Hi there! Welcome to our fun learning adventure. Today, we're going to explore the types of experimental research designs. Don't worry, we'll keep it simple and easy to understand. Let's get started! The objectives of our today's lesson are to differentiate the type of experimental research designs, recognize simple examples of each type, and apply the skills learned through a fun activity. So, what is experimental research design? Experimental research design is a plan for doing an experiment that follows specific steps. It uses two sets of variables, one that is changed on purpose and one that is measured to see the effect of that change. And these are the two variables in an experimental research design, called the independent variable and the dependent variable. Independent variable. This is the variable that the researcher changes or controls on purpose. It's the causes in the experiment. For example, if you want to test how sunlight affects plant growth, the amount of sunlight is the independent variable. While dependent variable, this is the variable that is measured or observed to see the effect of the changes. It's the effect in the experiment. In the plant example, the growth of the plant, such as height, number of leaves, and so on is the dependent variable. Take a look at this illustration, independent variable. This is the factor that is changed or controlled in the experiment, which is the type of fertilizer. Dependent variable is the outcome that is measured to see if there is an effect from the independent variable like plant growth. The arrow indicates that the dependent variable, which is plant growth, is what you measure to observe the effects of changes in the independent variable, which is the fertilizer type. So, the independent variable is what you change, and the dependent variable is what you measure in response to that change. Have you ever tried to figure out which toy is the best or which game is the most enjoyable? Scientists or researchers do something similar when they design experiments. Here are the types of experimental research designs. We have the pre-experimental designs, true experimental design and quasi-experimental design. In pre-experimental design, this is like a test run or a trial experiment to see if an idea might work. Scientists or researchers make a change and see what happens with one group. The pre-experimental design is the simplest type of research. It follows basic steps, but doesn't have a comparison group. This means that even if a change happens after the treatment, the scientist or researcher can't be sure the treatment caused the change. In other words, a single group is often studied, but no comparison between an equivalent non-treatment group is made. For example, if a teacher wants to see if a new type of pen helps students write faster, they might give the new pen to one student and watch what happens. This helps them decide if they should try it with the whole class. This illustration shows how a teacher tests the new pen with one student, observes the writing speed, and then decides whether to use the pen with the entire class based on the observations. Pre-experimental design has three types. These are one-shot case study design, one-group pretest post-test design, and static group comparison. In one-shot case study design, you study one group after they receive a treatment or change to see what happens. There is no comparison with a different group. Example, you give a new type of fertilizer to a plant and then observe its growth. You look at this plant alone and see how it grows without comparing it to other plants that didn't get the fertilizer. In this design, you only look at this one plant after you give it the fertilizer. This illustration shows that a single plant is given a new type of fertilizer and its growth is observed without comparing it to other plants. In one group, pretest post-test design, 
you measure something before and after a treatment on the same group to see if there was a change. Example, you test students' math skills before and after they use a new learning app. You compare their test scores before and after using the app to see if their skills improved. By comparing their scores from the first test to the second test, you can see if there was an improvement in their math skills after using the app. This illustration shows how the same group of students is tested on their math skills before and after using a new learning app and their scores are compared to see if there was an improvement. In static group comparison, you compare one group that got a treatment to another group that did not get the treatment to see if there is a difference. Example, we want to find out if doing homework helps students do better on a math test. We have two classes of students. One class gets homework before the test, while the other class doesn't. After they both take the test, we look at the scores to see if the students who did the homework got better scores than the students who didn't. Here is the illustration showing the static group comparison for the homework experiment. It visualises how one group of students does homework while the other does not, and their test scores are compared afterward. In true experimental design, this design has two groups. One group gets the new change and the other group does not. This helps scientists or researchers know if the change really made a difference. Example. To see if a new type of plant food helps plants grow taller, the scientist or researcher gives the food to one group of plants, which is the experimental group, and just water to another group, which is the control group. Then they compare which plants grow taller. By comparing the growth of the plants that got the new food with the plants that only got water, you can determine if the new plant food really makes a difference. In this experiment, two groups of plants are used to evaluate a new type of plant food. The experimental group receives the new plant food, while the control group is given only water. After a period of growth, the heights of the plants in both groups are measured and compared. This comparison helps determine whether the new plant food has influenced plant growth. This illustration visually depicts the process of assessing the impact of the plant food on plant growth. In quasi-experimental design, this design is similar to the true experiment, but instead of randomly choosing groups, scientists or researchers use groups that already exist like two different classes in a school. For example, if we want to know if playing math games helps students learn better, we can use two classes, one that plays math games and one that does not. The classes are not chosen randomly. They are simply the ones available. The key difference here is that the two classes are not randomly assigned. They are just the available classes. After some time, we compare how well the students in each class perform in math to determine if the class that played math games learned better. Let's explore. We'll delve into our lesson through a group activity. The class will be divided into five groups, with five to seven pupils. Each group will receive a set of scenario flashcards. The groups will act as design detectives, tasked with solving the mystery of which experimental research design is used in each scenario. Each group will read through their flashcards, determine the type of design for each scenario, and present their answers and reasoning to the class, one scenario at a time. The group with the highest score at the end of the game wins the title of Top Design Detectives.
In this section, each group will identify pre-experimental designs. How did you find the activity? What was the most challenging aspect of the activity? And how did you overcome it? How did working as a group help you in understanding the different types of experimental designs? Let's recap. Experimental research design. Experimental research design is a plan for doing an experiment that follows specific steps. It uses two sets of variables, one that is changed on purpose and one that is measured to see the effect of that change. And these are the two variables in an experimental research design called the independent variable and the dependent variable. The two variables in an experimental research design are independent variable is the variable that the researcher changes or controls on purpose it's the cause in the experiment, while dependent variable is the variable that is measured or observed to see the effect of the changes. It's the effect in the experiment. Here are the types of experimental research designs. We have the pre-experimental designs, true experimental design and quasi-experimental design. Pre-experimental design the simplest type of research that follows basic steps but does not include a comparison group. True experimental design. This design involves two groups. One group receives the new intervention, while the other group does not. Quasi-experimental design. This design is similar to the true experimental design, but instead of randomly assigning groups, researchers use pre-existing groups. There are three types of pre-experimental design. One-shot case study design, one group pre-test post-test design, and static group comparison. In one-shot case study design, you study one group after they receive a treatment or intervention to observe the effects. There is no comparison with a different group. One group pre-test post-test design, you measure a variable before and after a treatment within the same group to determine if there has been a change. Static group comparison. You compare the outcomes of one group that received a treatment to another group that did not receive the treatment to see if there is a difference. Let's evaluate. Let's test your knowledge to see if you truly understand the lesson. Read each question and choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answers in your notebook and submit it to your research teacher for review. In this part, answer each question based on your understanding. Each question is worth five points. Write your answers in your research notebook and have them checked by your research teacher. Thank you for joining today's lesson on experimental research designs. 
Remember, as Albert Einstein said, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. Keep exploring and adapting your knowledge. Until next time, take care and keep learning.